What's going on everyone? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we're going to be going over how do you know if you've had a rib fracture or if you've had a bad rib bruise or a rib contusion. Before we do that, note that this is not medical advice, it's educational advice only. So please speak to your family physician if you have had an injury to this area so that they can refer you to the appropriate healthcare professionals. So number one is imaging. X-rays and CT scans are basically your gold standards in terms of diagnosing uh, rib fractures and differentiating rib fractures from a rib contusion. So if you have access to that or if you're going to urgent care or the emergency department, that's usually the first thing that they would do to rule that in or out and also see if there's any other associated structures that are injured as a result of that impact. So that's the, the first thing or the most important one. Number two is we're looking for point tenderness or very sharp tenderness on that area where the pain is with a rib fracture you will have that very specific point or fractures one or more points that feel very very exquisitely tender on palpation whereas with a rib bruise generally the pain or the tenderness will be a little bit more global versus localized so that's another thing is just kind of having a feel around in that area and then the other thing to be mindful of is we're looking for pain now pain is subjective so obviously you know somebody can have a rib fracture and complain of one out of ten pain and another person can have ten out of ten pain so it is subjective but generally with a rib fracture the pain is going to be very 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 severe compared to a rib contusion they're both going to hurt they're going to hurt quite a bit but with rib fractures, the pain is going to be quite severe. And usually with the rib fracture, the pain is going to be severe for a longer period of time versus with the rib contusion. Generally, you'll start to notice pretty good improvement within the first uh, several days, whereas with a rib fracture, it can take uh, at least a few weeks before you really start to notice uh, some changes in the symptoms. So that's another thing to be mindful of is, is, is the intensity of the pain. The other thing we're looking for is pain qualities with breathing and deep breathing so when you take a breath in obviously your lungs need to expand but because your rib cage is covering your lungs your rib cage needs to expand as well so again you're going to have pain with both of them when you're taking a deep breath in with a rib contusion and a rib fracture but again generally the pain with a with an inhale or when you breathe in is going to be very severe relative to a rib contusion where it's going to be more sore and with a rib fracture, again, generally the characteristics will be more of a sharper sensation and, and very, and almost even like a piercing sensation. So we're looking at pain quality and also pain scale, the number on, on that scale. Some of the other aspects that sometimes may or may not be associated with, with uh, knowing whether or not a rib is broken or, or you've had a contusion is the amount of bruising. So just because there's a lot of bruising doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the rib is broken. It's just there's a lot of soft tissues around that area and a lot of muscle. The other thing we're looking at is the subjective history. So we're looking at the velocity of the impact directly or indirectly. Was it a fall from five feet, 10 feet, 20 feet? Was it a motor vehicle accident at 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 kilometers? We're, we're trying to figure out those questions because that impact or the speed of impact or the the type of force that's applied to that area is going to play a role with whether or not our suspicion is true if there is a rib fracture or if it's uh, just a rib contusion. We also have to be mindful of some other medical aspects as well. Uh, is there a history of uh, frailer or weaker bones, things like osteopenia or osteoporosis? There are some people who get rib fractures just from sneezing, especially as you get older. So these are things that are real and and that would be obviously associated with a specific moment where if you were to sneeze, you feel you know severe sharp pain that uh, doesn't go after a while. And, and uh, so, so we're looking at past medical history, osteoporosis, osteopenia, any issues with the bone or, or the characteristics of the bone that may predispose somebody to fractures. And then if there is a fracture or there is a contusion, we're looking at what is somebody's past medical history to help to, to determine what the healing is going to be like. Because if somebody has a history of smoking, history of diabetes, if there's high blood pressure or any other medical uh, issues going on, that's going to affect the rate of healing in that area. Let's just summarize, the difference between a rib fracture and a rib contusion is a rib fracture generally tends to show 
uh, very sharp tenderness on that region that is sore versus a rib contusion is more generalized. X-ray or CT scan are going to detect the fracture, that's our gold standard, versus it's not going to detect a contusion. And then we're looking at the characteristics of the pain, how intense it is, and it, how it is progressing or changing over days and over weeks. With rib fracture, it generally tends to be a lot slower versus a rib contusion. And then also being mindful that things like bruising, swelling, color changes in that area tend to not be the greatest predictor or as important to to be able to use to differentiate whether the rib is broken or contused. And then also looking at somebody's past medical history and determining if they are predisposed or at higher risk for having a rib fracture, things like osteoporosis, osteopenia, and then what the recovery is like with that injury based on somebody's past medical history will play a role. If they have diabetes, um, history of smoking, things like that that are gonna affect bone healing. The other thing to be mindful of is with a rib fracture, as I mentioned before, is we're looking at the subjective history. What was the velocity of the movement? What kind of impact there was? And that's going to help determine whether or not there's a higher likelihood of a rib fracture versus a rib contusion. Let me know what you thought about this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Have you broken your ribs or do you believe that you have? Or do you have a rib contusion? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know what your story has been thus far. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing if you haven't already.